Hello lovelies, this is Joel Clark, lead designer of Lone Wolf Fist here in my uh, my new apartment. Ta-da! I actually moved uh, the end of last month, started this one, and so I'm dealing with all the wonderful social anxiety that comes from culture shock and then my own actual social anxiety. So I've been a bit of a shut-in for the last couple of days, but as a result, my house is really clean and nice. Um, or rather, my apartment. I'm no longer in a trailer. I'm in an actual grown-up living space. Ta-da! Um, so, currently adjusting to all of that. Um, yeah, I guess nobody actually cares about that. But it's a very significant event for me. So, happy to be up here in sunny Anchorage, Alaska, which I've never been anywhere near this far north, so it's kind of a surreal experience. Uh, there are mountains out my window, which I wasn't emotionally prepared for. <sighs> anyway, um, working on Earth Splitting Tetsubo today. I'm going to type that one up. I am. I feel a lot more productive now that I'm out of the uh, old atmosphere and in this one. There's something about being in an apartment like this. I don't know. It kind of puts me in a more, um, a more structured state of mind. I seem to be able to focus a little better on the writing, so that's good. Uh, I was going over Blood from God's Eye with Albert Lim, our editor, uh, yesterday. He's got some really good suggestions for cuts and streamlines, which I think is a good idea. I actually didn't anticipate him doing any of that, because I kind of just kicked out Blood from God's Eye as an unedited mess, uh, as a sort of a promo thing. Since I'm giving it away for free, I didn't want to put a ton of energy into it. Uh, and I put enough in to make a little handshake for the system for people that were new to it. But he dug it into it anyway. Uh, he's one of those guys that goes the extra mile, and this is a project that really requires you to go the extra mile, I found. Sorry about the, uh, the going back and forth. I have a real chair now. I actually got an office chair. Ta-da! I don't know if you can see that. I can't see it on the computer, so I'm assuming you can't. But it's nice. Uh, it was a little cheap one from Walmart. Again, just a little upgrade. Uh, I did a lot of uh, minimizing and upgrading in very small ways recently, so it's been nice. Um, I had some money saved up from my day job, and uh, yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it, it feels like a pretty good investment. Um, the acoustics are different in here. It seems a little emptier. I think it's because like I was in a really small little room before, and now I'm in like this is like four rooms because I've got like the living room here, and then there's or the parlor rather, the foyer, and then the the kitchen, and then in the other room there's my kids' room, um, which is lovely. I get to see my children on a bi-weekly basis now, which I'm very excited about. Oh jeez, this wasn't meant to be a vlog about my personal crap. Sorry, it's it's a big adjustment, and as you can probably tell, I'm a touch scattered. Um, culture shock is a very real thing, and um, I'm kind of slowly working through it emotionally. Anyway, uh, we're getting really close to release, so I'm getting excited and nervous, as, as you do. Um, I've got Earth Splitting Tetsubo on the chopping block today, and if I have time, I'd like to do either Dog of Grassways or Immortal Emerald Tiger. I haven't decided which one yet. Uh, we'll see. I've never completed two styles in one day, but I actually feel like it's a reasonable goal. Um, now, I just, I was working through a lot of mental fog before, and it just feels like it all fell away recently, uh, which is one of the reasons my anxiety is resurfacing, unfortunately. So, yeah, it's, it's fun living in here. <sighs> anyway, um, I've been working with Adam Balderstone, one of my super backers, uh, on making his kung fu techniques. The reason I'm working with him first is because I'm actually forcing him to do it uh, via podcast. So we did our first installment of that, and we're going to be doing our second installment pretty shortly. I'm having uh, Brendan Davis sort of co-host that, and we're going to be making a listenable podcast for all of our fellow super backers and for anyone else who's interested in designing for this game. Uh, as far as like, even if you just want to do homebrew, it'd be really nice to kind of see the thought process that goes in taking something from idea to execution and actually getting some a, a real cohesive kung fu style out of just a very small set of parameters. Um, 
so that's he got that's why he got first bid on that one it's not that he's it's not just that i know him it's that i know him and therefore i can exploit him for all of your benefit um but i'm also doing that for my other super backers because i have a couple of clan backers and i have some uh, style backers all of whom i want to have a really good working idea of how to take their ideas and turn them into nifty content for the game because all of that has to get completed before I send it off to Albert for editing um, which means I also need to get off my duff and write the rest of these kung fu styles uh, actually after this one uh, the domain I need to re-examine the domain mechanics to make sure those are finished up and I keep finding little things as I work through the kung fu where I'm like what well, didn't I write this and I designed this and it's in like an ancient earlier draft of the game so like just today I put back in the how do you use a heavy object for a weapon rules which apparently we're missing from this draft I didn't know that um, so that's a bit of an oversight but yeah uh, after these uh, it'll be the Gepikala and the uh, Yotokala done so domain mechanics is my next stop after that um, I did a real real light version of the XP mechanic. I keep kind of fiddling with it. It's one of the ones I wasn't really happy with in its previous incarnations, but it had some hits through playtesting and people really liked whenever you got to say, I'm gonna do this thing because it's characterful and you got an XP Benny for it. Uh, the immediacy of that feedback and the, the fun that brought to the table is undeniable. So some version of that has to stay in. But I, as a designer and as a game runner and a GM, really liked whenever there was a cohesive goal the players all agreed to go do and all of their actions had to contribute to doing that. Um, that really helped drive the game and focus it. I find that without that kind of cohesive goal and even if you have it a lot of times players because of their power level feel really confident and just forking off on their own in different tangents and although technically I don't really mind that because you can just switch back and forth between Hey, this is what you're doing, and then Thousand Smile Away, this is what you're doing. That doesn't feel very cogent as like a group activity. Like with a group activity, you want everyone on the same page. And you there are a lot of tricks I use as a GM to make that happen, but the best thing is to have a sense of unity and purpose present for the party. Um, and so I like the idea, since that's what I want to see as a game designer, what I'd like to incentivize that with is XP. So I'm trying to make certain I, I do all of those things. It's, it's a lot of little weights to lift, and I need to re-examine like, the cost for things like the different techniques and what have you, just to give myself an idea of like, okay, like how long do players stay at a certain power level? Like how many sessions? What does that equate to? because I really do want the first year or so of more or less weekly sessions of this game to be building from going from like a degree one hero all the way to the highest degree and then later sessions past that first year to be a blend of domain play and um, just high level curb stomping and I want to make sure that there's a lot of like end game content for that and so there needs to be a lot of really powerful monsters and gods and bad guys and blah 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 blah, blah. so it's it's interesting it feels like making a whole mmo by myself sometimes um but i it's also forced me to like really critically examine how difficult it is to make content for a game like this and say okay like where can we make this easier where can we bring this back to template where can we simplify this what can we cut out of this what's necessary to bring for to, to keep that kind of strategically interesting combat and what's what's just dross that i can toss i guess it's just adding unnecessary complexity and that's it's been a fascinating process it has but now that we're uh, hitting right close to the end of it, I almost feel a little sad to see it all go, you know, to just have it out there. It'll be fun to run this game, but it'll be sad not to be working on the, the core parts of it anymore. It'll just be working on content. Um, oh, that's the other thing I had to do is the different lores for the clans. I recombined the clan and region lore. Uh, the more I worked on it, the more I realized that it wasn't really productive to split those two, the two different things. It was a lot better just to kind of like squish them back together and say, okay, well, clans are kind of a product of their environment, and the environment is suffused with the political intrigues of the clan. Therefore, 
the content all got a lot denser and richer and more usable as a result. So we're back down to seven lores instead of 14, which is fine. Because uh, I'm still going to have the minor clan lores uh, that my wonderful super backers have paid for. Thank you, by the way. And let me see what else. I've got a lot more stuff coming down the pike from Kazuki. Um, I've been... I've, I told him to do some monsters for me this last time. And he's done some pretty cool monsters in the past, but this time I was like, just give me a sheet of different monsters. I want to just have a big selection of them. So that's one of his next projects. I want to see what he produces for that. Uh, let me see. What else? Jeez. It feels like... It feels like I'm talking about the same stuff month in a month out. But I mean, like, that's... That's what it is. It's just little little steps, little baby steps towards getting the whole game done. Um, oh, you know, I need to actually do a, I need to do the monster rules, and I need to do the uh, machine rules again. They exist. They're just kind of clunky as they're currently written, and I want to re-examine them and kind of clean them up a little bit. Um, oof, what else? I think that's everything. Ooh, I think that is everything. The last, like, and this isn't really, like, work work, like it's not like design work it's more like an editing kind of draft is i want to go through um just like the the spine of the book like the structure of it and just kind of make sure everything has a nice consistent voice um i've done that before and although it can be a little tedious um it does make for a more readable product and that's i think the last thing i'm going to do before i ship it off to albert for editing ah uh, i was really happy by the way, to get his feedback on Blood from God's Eye. I didn't expect it, um, but it was really good. And one of the great things that an editor will do, and any of you who ever want to make your own game, I powerfully suggest, even before you talk to an artist, talk to an editor. Uh, find an editor who is willing to cut. Because one of the best strengths that my editor brings is that he's not afraid to be like boldly critical about how weighty certain parts of the book are. He's not uh, afraid to say, okay, like, what what is the focus of this? How do we narrow towards that focus? Um, because, I mean, as a writer and as a designer, you're exploding with ideas. You're like, oh, I want a system for this. No, I want to put this in the game. But ultimately, your game only has a very, very small appeal. The, the, like the, the blade of your weapon is the functional part of it. And the rest is impressive, but the real important part is that edge. And an editor is just basically your whetstone. They're there to sharpen, and it, as a consequence of sharpening, you reduce the mass of the weapon, but it makes it a better weapon overall. That's probably the manliest uh, simile I could possibly have made, but you get the idea. <sighs> anyway, using this as a impromptu therapy session for my social anxiety has proven to be very effective. So I guess I'm going to get back to writing. I just wanted to give you all a heads up on what was happening and the, the improvement to my situation. I'm sure you're all rooting for me. Yay. Yay, Joel Clark, lead designer of Lone Wolf Fist. Go for him. Um, but yeah, things are rolling along really, really nicely. We're on to the second week of March now. I would ideally like to have the entire first draft done by the end of this month. Um, it's the 10th currently. I don't know if I can pull it off in 20 days. I'm going to schedule it and see. Bye.